Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is the Ramble, and I'm Alex, that's what the name says, and we'll be here until midnight tonight, Eastern Daylight Time. Ladies and gentlemen, the last time we checked in with Stephen Pearl, uh, we had to end the interview short because... Ooh, it's one thing after another. My, yeah. cat, my cat's eye exploded. Yeah, cat's eye exploded. Now, like first of all, let's 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 give them a little backstory here. Your cat had an infection in his eye, right? Yeah. Yep. So the vet decided we have to remove the eye. Remove the eye. Right. It was nutty. It was nutty thing. It, it, yeah. So then they, they brought the cat home with one eye. Yeah. And as we were doing the interview last time, yes, really you great. look down at the floor and you go, oh, there's a little blood down there. And then you look over this way and you go, oh, my God, there's blood everywhere. Yeah, it was like a Stephen King movie. It was horrible. Now, what happened, and I would imagine this is what happened. This is, tell me if I'm wrong. The cat tried to scratch the eye. Uh, I didn't see him go near it the whole time I was watching him. They just said, we took him to the vet. They said something broke. It was a little thing with a lot of blood. Yeah, and, uh, they fixed. I don't know what what happened, but they fixed them. So, so it wasn't it wasn't anything. It wasn't anything serious. No, but it was a lot. It was like look, I never do a little. Cat yeah. In other words, one of those things where like when sometimes we bleed and we just do a little bit of bleeding, but it's a yeah. lot and it won't stop. Exactly. Yeah, this guy was. Oh man, I go okay. And then, oh, I was panicking a big time. I had other stuff on my mind too. And then that. And you were thinking about you'd have to you'd have to put the cat uh, put yeah, the cat okay. down. Yeah, I but love they, I love this joke of mine. I keep saying I had a cat I had to put down once. I had to tell him he was worse than the dog. Ah, you put him down, man. Yeah. You put him down. <laughs> <laughs> You're cutting me down, man. Me. <laughs> and cool, in man. normal cat fashion, he went fuck you. <laughs> you know, cats always have a. Fuck you, attitude. Oh, they always have the attitude. If they yeah. could give you the finger, they would. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So anyway, the cat's uh, fine now. He's fine now. You yeah, said they put a satellite dish around his head. Satellite dish on him. He's laying in the. He went to wanted to lay in the bathtub, so he's in the bathtub chilling out. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. He was so doped out yesterday. He tried getting off the bed and flopped right on the ground like a drunk. So. Uh, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. So but bathtub. how long do you have to keep the cone of silence on him? I'm leaving it on until. Well, one of us is dead. That's what I'm doing. So, yeah, yeah. I am. I'm leaving it on for a while. So they did that to keep him from scratching it and things like that. Uh, yeah, well, I watched him. He didn't do it. I never saw him scratch it. But we have how to how how does he look with one eye? Is it just closed all the time? Is that yeah, it? It's just closed. It looks like you know, Popeye cat. <laughs> Popeye cat. Well, I said you could call him Sammy. Sammy, if he hugs Nixon, I'm putting him down. Those. Yeah, you could call him Sammy. You could call him Popeye. Popeye, winky thing. Who else said? Oh, you could call him Columbo. Oh, pardon me, there's one more thing. <laughs> Your finger around the victim's throat with a note that says, "I'm fucking glad I killed him." Yeah. So, uh, Peter Falk was lacking one eye, right? Yeah. Duncan Peter Falk. Like By the way, one of the best, one of the most wonderful interviews I ever did was with Peter Falk. Seemed like he was a fun guy. Oh, he, I did him at Sirius XM, and we just loved each other. We we got uh, along great because I knew everything about his career, and I knew things that most people didn't know about. Like uh, one of my favorite Peter Falk movies is a thing called Tune In Tomorrow, uh, in which he plays this radio writer in the late 40s who every town he goes to, he winds up having to leave town running out of town. <laughs> and you, you you don't know why until this movie takes place, and it takes place in uh, New Orleans, and it's Keanu Reeves, and he's in love with this girl, and and Falk kind of is his Cyrano, you know, teaching uh, him how to woo the girl and everything. Uh, and my favorite line out of the film, and I have it uh, here, uh, is. Um, 
well, wait a minute. I, I can I can actually bring it up so you could hear it because I actually I love this uh, this uh, this uh, th this uh, quote so well that I I actually have it here so I can play it whenever I want to, which is not very often. Here we go. I think it's this one. Here, let's see here if you can hear it now. Life is a shit storm. I want it to rain and shit. The best umbrella you can buy is art. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I just love it, you know. Yeah. Um, but he was a lovely guy. Jeez, oh, yeah. I really thought the world of him. Um, uh, cool. And, and he friend. liked me, liked me too, you know. Uh, it, it was it was uh, it was a, a match made in heaven. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, romance yeah. made in the stars. Yeah. So anyway, I, we were uh, last time when we were, we were starting to talk about music, and then your eye cat's eye hemorrhaged. Yeah. Oh God. So what were we talking about? I yeah. Uh, well, we, well, we were talking about the fact that number one, this cat is a one-eyed cat. And oh, yes. Pe peeping in a seafood store, <laughs> which is shake, rattle, and roll. And so that go. goes back to all the music you love. Yeah, the old, now, the old stuff, three-chord bliss, man. You know, when I talk to you, it's, uh, we talk about uh, 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 Johnny Winter. We ah. talk about, you talk about all the old guys, you know. Yeah. Uh, my favorite music of the era was every, anything that came out of New Orleans was gold, oh, yeah. was gold, sure. whether it was Little sure. Richard, Fats Domino. And I didn't realize I was listening to a music from that part of the country. Uh -huh. And it wasn't until I had Dr. John on my show in New York. And he said, I know you have a piano in the other room. Can I go in and play? So we turned on the mics in the big studio where the piano oh, wow. was. And he spent a half hour just playing all this stuff. Oh, and and it, it was a certain style. And I said, what is that style? He says, well, uh, my teacher was a guy named Professor Longhair. Uh -huh. He said, and this is New Orleans style music. Mm -hmm. And he turned me on to it. And after that, I couldn't get enough of that music. I was uh -huh. listening to Longhair. I was listening to all, all the people that came out of that era. Fats Domino was part of that. Fats sure. Domino was the, sure. was the poor man's long hair. Exactly. You yeah. know? <laughs> Uh, and uh, although he was the more successful one, his long hair couldn't work for years in New Orleans because he had had an arrest or something, so he couldn't get a cabaret license. Uh oh, he whistled at the white lady. Yeah, yeah, and he couldn't, he could not, uh, he couldn't play. Yeah, uh, so. poor guy. Yeah, uh, I had to have a cabaret card back then. So he yeah, like, yeah, oh, and, and uh, he. Um, but I loved long hair, and he turned me on to long hair. He said, "This is the guy you got to listen to." And uh, this guy got to listen to. Uh, I'll tell you what I loved about about Mac, as I knew him, uh, Doctor John Mac Rebinac, was that he was he was a heroin addict when I knew him. Not for a long time, yeah. But he was a functioning heroin addict. You know, there were these people that do it so much that they they function. They could That's go out and do it. Anymore. Just go, <laughs> go out and do a concert and so yeah. on. You know, the only difference was you'd go into his bathroom and there's blood on the walls. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Could have been a cat, you know. He, he kicked it eventually. Yeah. Uh, he, you know what he didn't do? He didn't kick it. He matured out of it. Uh -huh. Now, this is something people don't know about heroin. If you're a heroin addict and you start doing it when you're 20, by the time you reach about 45, all of a sudden one day you wake up and you don't want it anymore. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, it's called maturing out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they don't know why it happens or whatever, but if you live that long enough, it works. Yeah. But he used to carry everywhere he went, and I went to parties at his, you know, his hotel room. He would have it sitting on a table somewhere, a petrified human head. <laughs> Big Morrow, good to see you. How's the Rotary Club? And I once asked him, I said, when he would go on stage, that head was on the piano. Oh, my God. Yeah, and I asked him about it, and he said, oh, him, he just, uh, he was a poor black guy, and, you know, he had all these problems, yeah. and being black and everything, he says, he died, and I bought his head, he said, <laughs> and I, he says, I take it all over the world with me, and 
put it on the piano when I'm playing. He says, so this guy has been to more wonderful places than he would have ever gone in, uh, his, in his life. Wow. And he felt very paternal towards <laughs> this petrified head. My little head. I always knew I'd get it. Yeah, yeah. But he was, I, I, lo I love Mac. He was a terrific guy. Terrific Great. guy. Uh, albeit a heroin addict when I knew him. In later yeah. years, I met up with him. He did one of our breakfasts with Bennett's in San Francisco. Oh, cool. I wish I was at that one. And um, he started playing with the band, with Dick Bright's band, classed uh, it up 100%, just changed the whole tone of the thing. Sure. But anyway, oh, God. Oh. anyway uh, uh, he, he, I thought he would, I, but he turned me on to New Orleans music, and that's what I fell in love with. And then I found out that the people I listened to when I was a kid, like Fats Domino, Little Richard, uh, um, um, who who did Sea Cruise? Uh, Frankie, Frankie Ford. Ford. That, that again, another guy from New Orleans. That was all New Orleans music. Well, Richard was it? He was from uh, Macon, Georgia. Yeah, but he recorded his stuff oh, in New Orleans. Oh, did he record Orleans? I did not. Know yeah, record, yeah. I know that. Uh, little little Richard, you'll love this. Story. I always bring this up about little Richard. Like My little audience little. has heard this story, but I have I don't think I've ever told you. One time I was supposed to have a little Richard on the show. This is here in New York, and he didn't show up. Uh oh. Uh, so I called him up. I had his phone number at his hotel, and I said, "So how come he didn't show up? You know what his excuse was? I don't know. I had a touch of the cancer. Oh, <laughs> a touch of the cancer. Well, who heard it? Oh my God, he had a touch of the cancer. He had a touch of the oh, cancer, oh, uh, and and so therefore I never. I think maybe I did do an interview with him at, at another time, but it, it it him not showing up was drastic for the show, but it was great for my long term storytelling because I've always got this story about little right. Richard, and I was saying, I got a touch of the cancer. Woo <laughs> Woo. Yeah, but I mean, a lot of those guys were just terrific. Oh, sure, that's real music, man. And that's my, and, and this one you'll love too. My my biggest moment was Shecky and I drove across the country when I came to, back to New York here, and we stopped off in uh, in uh, not Nashville, but uh, the other Memphis. Memphis. And. Uh, we went out, we saw Elvis's place, you know. Yeah. If you ever get to Memphis, do not go to Elvis's place. Yeah. It's just a, you know, the jungle room is just in, in the bad taste, okay? Go over to Sun Records. Yeah. That's and take the Sun Records tour. Uh -huh. You, they take you into that studio, right? And you're standing there suddenly realizing that every great record from that era was made in that room, whether it was Jerry Lee Lewis, Elvis Presley, we could go on and on, who are some of the Howlin guys? B.B. King, Howlin' Wolf. Uh, yeah. I mean, oh, my God. Uh, yeah, on and on and on and on, and you're Over. standing there where they yeah. worked. Yeah, oh, my God. You're you know, out of this dinky little studio. It's incredible. You know, I don't think it was even called Sun at the time. It was called uh, something Recording Services or something. It's called Unborn Memphis Sun. Recording Services. And yeah. it was just, it, it's just, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Uh, you yeah. know? Sure. It, it just makes you feel, I'm... Uh, I'm history I'm, was made in that room. History. Hit, music Parker. history made in that room. Boom, sure. boom, boom. That's yeah. it, you know. But what I was going to ask you was, because of your love of all this old music. All I the, love the old music. Yeah. Is there anybody today that you enjoy listening to? No. No. <laughs> I, I haven't heard everybody, but uh, no. No, I just listen to the old stuff. The new stuff doesn't do anything. Because, I'll tell you, man, there's, there's people I do. I mean, I love Lady Gaga. But because, okay. she, no, but because, forget the silly stuff she does. She's a great jazz singer. Okay, she's a very good singer. She's, she's amazing. Well, cool that's cool. where she started, was singing yeah. in the nightclubs here in New York doing jazz. Yeah, real music. Like yeah, that. you know, yeah. so I enjoy listening to her. Well, I don't tell you my problems. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but, 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 uh, <laughs> so there's nobody, there's nobody today that you would listen to. Nobody I go nuts for, no, it's like, it's, I don't, I don't, I don't follow it but i see whatever it is i see i just see hip-hop i don't see any there are people playing blues and good stuff but 
it's too clean. It's too clean. I like the dirty old stuff, you know, recording. Yeah, well, that's what you listen to. I listen to uh, uh, my uh, iPhone is full of Frank Sinatra. I love Sinatra. Tony I Bennett, Sinatra. you know, yep. people like that. I, day in Ron and, town. and I think it was probably because it was one of the, you know, those were the people my father listened to, yeah. you know, and played with. And played sure. with. He was a sure. musician. Classic you grow into when you're young, you want to hear rock and roll, you get older. Hey, this sounds pretty good. Oh, yeah. My father went, what's that crap you're listening to? <laughs> what's that garbage you're listening to? Yeah. I remember I was listening to The End by The Doors once when the album was brand new. And he gets to the part, the killer awoke before dawn. My father comes into the room and he's looking around. He's listening. He goes, that guy is a moron. You may not know it now. <laughs> you may not realize it 10 years ago. But that guy is it's a, a moron. moron. And with that, we will close our little discussion for this week. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Alex. Good to see you. There's no disasters yet. So Gl I'm gl be. Glad your cat's fine and you're still in your apartment. Oh, Lord have mercy. Oh, good. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that's Stephen Pearl. Uh, oh, gee, I've, I've tried to pl I've tried to play that and it didn't start immediately. How about this? Oh, listen. oh, listen. Those things are taking time to go. I <laughs> kick off. Let me. Wow. Ah, uh, son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Anyway, nothing. You know what I got to do when it comes to. Um, uh, Weekends after the weekend's over, I should come in here and start everything up and make sure it's all working, because over the weekend somehow it just goes. And that's what happened tonight. Just shortly before I was about to go on here, I went to start the thing that you know switches this whole program and gives you stuff like that and like that and like me, okay, and uh, it wasn't working. It just didn't start. And it's because I had loaded some other program in that was uh, up updating itself. And I guess it threw everything off. And I had to completely reboot the machine like three minutes before we were supposed to go on. And the one thing after another, after another, after another. Well, I finally got the thing going on about two minutes late. Uh, but I just said to myself, eh, if it doesn't even get on, to hell with it, you know. I'm so tired these days that I, that means I just don't have to do the show, right? Right. Okay, well, I think it is time now. Let's see if the Zoom works, okay? If the Zoom works, uh, things can't be all that bad. Let me just bring a bunch of these people in here. Oh, there's Jeff, and here comes uh, Brian Neary. Uh, let me see here. Up, 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 up. And uh, are you all there? Yep, I'm here. Oh, yeah, Okay. Brian, hey, Brian, what's your wife's name? Tiffany. Oh, okay. Because there was some some woman, a friend of mine, um, I got a note from, oddly enough, from uh, uh, from our old friend, um, uh, what's his name? <laughs> <laughs> Phil. Phil, that no. a friend of mine, uh, a friend of ours, a broadcaster, another guy I have worked opposite, you know, we're on different stations, but we've known each other over the years, uh, had a heart attack. Mm. Uh, yeah, had a heart attack. And uh, that uh, that was kind of like, um, boy, everything's working wrong today. Um, um, uh, um, uh, what's his name? God, I am just so out of it these days. It is just amazing. Let me see here. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Let me go. You're over. trying to multitask. That's why I'm trying to multitask. I tried <laughs> to get the show on the air. Listen, you should be happy I did it at all. Okay, all right. Uh, Terry McGovern is his name. And, oh yeah, yeah. Terry and he had yeah. a heart attack. Uh, and he said, "Put him on a thing." I had a heart attack. I'm in the hospital. I'm getting out, but I'm okay. So it's okay. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, just another person I know who's got something wrong with him. Tomorrow I'm going to my yearly meeting with my doctor, and I've got all this lightheadedness and stuff like that, which I think now has to do with my inner ear because I'm, my, my equilibrium's a bit off, too. 
Mm. You know. Anyway, so but I'm all Why? worried about that. Why'd you ask her name? How did her name link to anything? What do you mean her name? Oh well, no, <laughs> I, there was somebody named. <laughs> there's some woman named Neri, who oh, really? was listed there. Let me see if I can uh. find the name at all. Uh, let me see here. First, I have to get Phil's message, and then I have to uh, go um, uh, get the uh, the item. And um, here we go. Um, here, in case people want to see a picture of uh, of him, there he is. That's him. That's uh, Terry McGovern, and that's him in the hospital there. Uh, and uh, I go all the way down here, and I come to the name. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. I f figured maybe it had, it could have been uh, there. I never heard the name Neary before in my whole life, you hmm. know. Well, let's add Cramp. He's, no, wait a minute, where is it? Where is it? It was here. It was here. It was here. It was here. It's on the, oh, They're on the email. They're on the above. email. Above and now I'm trying to look and see. Here's <laughs> Debbie Durst. Oh, here we go. Sage Neary. Oh no, no relation. <laughs> okay, well I. I'm a, a very small Italian family that came over here because of some bad stuff over there. So. Yeah, well they I had know. only one child. <laughs> oh. We went to only children for a little while. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, well I just uh, you know I just didn't I didn't know that that was uh, wasn't a relative or your wife. No. But her name is Tiffany? Yes, Tui Tian, her Vietnamese name, Tui Tian. And you, you will anglicize that to Tiffany? They did, I didn't. They did? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jeez. Hey, speaking of Dr. John, you used to open up with Dr. John, right? On uh, Live 105. No, that wasn't, that, that, that wasn't Dr. John. That was Professor no? Longhair. Oh, okay. So that's Professor. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was Professor Longhair. And it's funny you should mention it because I was just – I had my iPod today, my iPhone today on shuttle, and mm. that song started playing. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah that's a blast from the past. It's that, called, it's called that was in, embedded in all of our heads from you starting up the show all the time. But, but you're close because Dr. John was a protege of Professor Longhair. Yeah, so yeah. that's the reason why. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> there's a song that uh, I, I, I went around and around with Pearl on uh, some tw some messages back and forth because he sent me his fa his favorite artist is Johnny Winter and mm -hmm. if I had to say I had a favorite artist it's probably Dr. John I just mm -hmm. think he's the best that ever was and um, so we got to talking back and forth and I brought up the fact that there's a song that Dr. John wrote and did called Such a Night and there is a line in there you walked in with your best friend Jim, uh, and uh, here, and then I here I go trying to take you away from him. But if I don't do it, somebody else will. That's how mm -hmm. the lyric goes. You, do you know the lyric? You heard the song? No. Well, I knew Jim. Jim was Jimmy Douglas. Uh. Who was uh, who worked at uh, at Atlantic Records? For the the daughter, the, da the father of the woman that's in that song, whose name was Anita Wexler. His name was Jerry Wexler, the guy who ran Atlantic Records. Mm. And I, I knew both of them. I said, "There's another song where I know everybody in the song." <laughs> like I was always very proud that I knew everybody uh, except for Lou Reed. Who were in the song "Walk on the Wild Side" by Lou Reed? Oh no, he would. No, he was talking about he, who was the who was the guy in there? Oh, Joe D'Alessandro. I didn't know Joe D'Alessandro, but I knew Holly Woodlawn, Candy Darling, uh, and Jackie Curtis. And so I was always very proud that I knew all the people in that song. Yeah. So I'm very proud that I know all the people in such a night as well. And it did happen, by the way. He did. Do the nasty with her behind Jimmy's back, but those days were fueled by heroin for him. So, <clears throat> what have you? So anyway, uh, I'm again tired today. I don't know what it is. I the Marjorie thinks I'm just depressed. That's what she thinks it is. Mm. You know. Um, hmm. 
It gets. It's the depressing world. It's just, you know, I'm just so sick and tired of being stuck in here. And then today I went and uh, took a car down and a car back because things are getting a little worse here in New York for COVID. So I wanted to play it safe. I wasn't going on a bus. So I had to go downtown and back. It was $70 worth of, uh, of lifts. And, uh, but that's cheaper than if I had a car and had to park downtown. Uh, and uh, I, uh, you know, I was taking the car and I was feeling terrible in the car and I was feeling terrible outside. It's just that it's all just climbing in, you know, on me. And now we got this slight resurgence. Things are a little on the uptick here in New York. We had like 12 deaths a day before yesterday, and yesterday we had 11 deaths. And the number of people, hospitalizations, 70% of the hospitalizations are in those hot zones here in New York. Uh, but it was enough to drive it up to where we're like at 1.2% um, without those hot zones. So it's really... Uh, it's it, uh, the prospect of being stuck indoors again for another six months is starting to drive me crazy, and so it makes me loopy and tired, and you know. And I talked to Shecky. Uh, Shecky said he was having the same problem, you know, that yeah. he was lightheaded, tired, you know, and and he never used to leave the house anyway, you know. But <laughs> when you know that you can't, so. Anyway, it's all pretty terrible out there. Yeah. It's horrible. What about wintertime? Do you get out at wintertime, or is it? are you stuck indoors all winters? Well, I mean, it, I, I don't mind cold weather. I like cold weather. Yeah. You know, I'm a snow dog. Uh, but I, I, like, I like snow. Uh, I like cold weather. More than I like hot weather. On a really hot day, you won't find me going out. You know, I'm in here with the air conditioner. But this year, we didn't have to worry about that. We just didn't go out. And we still don't go out that much. You know, Marjorie has started watching, or start, has started, started watching a Turkish soap opera on Netflix. <laughs> and I said, what chapter, what episode are you up to? And I looked at it, and it said, like, 45 I said, they don't even have seasons with this show? And then I figured it out. It's probably like a soap opera. And I checked to see how many episodes there were of this thing. There are 165 episodes of it. <laughs> and, she's been, and she's been, this is what she's been watching. That's how bored she is. That's how inter uninteresting to be with I am. <laughs> I started Shit's Creek. I started that one over the weekend. Yeah. Yeah, I'm up to season three on that. It's okay. Oh. It's okay. Yeah. I don't like it. It's yeah. you know, it's fun. You know, it's it's no harm done. You know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, then uh, today they had uh, they had uh, the, uh, the hearings on with the, you know, and, and I and I went. I did you get the same feeling? I did you see any of it? I watched did you, most of it. Did you get the same feeling I did? Why are they even doing this? We know how it's going to end. Yeah. Yeah. You know what they they're, gonna answer. they're just going through the mechanics and then the Democrats have to get their two cents <laughs> worth in on how unfair it is and the Republicans have to somehow justify it, which is weird because they didn't justify it in the way they're justifying it now four years ago. They just said Ooh. because it's in an election year, blah, 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 blah. And it wasn't even an election year because the guy who wanted to put this uh, Merrick Garland in was already president of the United States and he wasn't running again. So mm. what does that have to do with it? You know, and I mean, and so I watched this thing today and I went, everybody's playing their part. You know, the Democrats know they, this is a fait accompli. They can't do anything about this. I mean, it would be nice if there was some kind of, you know, thing they could do to stop it. Or if there was one decent Republican who would say, hey, you know, I'm not going to. I'm not going to go along with this. I think we have two women, don't we, who would say that they're not voting for it or something. Yeah, I've, I've heard one or two. Yeah, but we don't have enough. You know, I think we need four, and mm -hmm. then it would be fine. You know, 
But uh, did you watch any of it, Charlie? No. No. Okay. I mean, it flashed across the TV a couple of times while I was watching. It. <clears throat> what were you watching instead? Um, I, I was watching. Um, what was I watching? Ellen. No, no, no. I wasn't <laughs> actually. I wasn't watching TV. I was watching some programs on that I've recorded earlier. Yeah. Like I've been watching that manhunt about Richard Jewell and a 1996 Olympic bombing. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the shows I was watching today. I was there that year. I went to the Olympics that year, and I think I left the day before that happened. Wow. Yeah, yeah. But I went to that little Olympic park. That was me emptying my trash. By the way. Um, um, I keep I'm forgetting. I'm watching Fargo, too. That's, that's... Actually, it's, it's okay, right? Oh, I like it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think uh, Chris Rock is doing a really nice job in it. Yeah, he's not being very funny. <laughs> no, he's not being very funny at all. <laughs> yeah. But this is a good role for him because yeah. this way people will take him a little more seriously, you yeah. know, than they have. So is anybody <laughs> else going to call us? Or is this going to be it? Is this going to look like the Beatles' Let It Be cover? <laughs> Um, well, early voting started in Texas today, and the numbers are up tremendously. Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. But Did you get but, to vote yet? But they're not all Charlie? going to that. Oh, me! I voted. I, I voted by mail in ballot. My, Did my they vote do the? In. Did they do the one count? The county only have one box still. Or yep. did they change oh, yep. that? Yep, Houston has well, one. They box. tried to change it, and then the appeals court overruled the judge's decision that oh my god because you know trump put all those judges on the appeals court so that, yes but what, what's the reason why can't you have a hundred boxes don't give if any you want? Reason. i mean <laughs> what it, we, we we're gonna stop things from getting out of hand if we you know but no let's not make it convenient so that you know people can't vote against trump well people are going to anyway <laughs> assholes you know, so in in the uh, in the county Nick, oh, county over from us or whatever, but an hour away they, uh, I guess they went and took all the ballots out. Yeah. And they put they closed the door and they didn't lock it, so about an hour until somebody reported it, so that didn't help the whole fraud thing. <laughs> well, they're looking for everything. I, I love it how 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 Trump made a big deal out of the fact that there were like. Uh, uh, the nine ballots that they found in a garbage can. Mm -hmm. Nine out of how many million? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't think that's going to change much of anything. Yeah, Facebook, they keep showing these videos of, you know, like this uh, secret camera, you know, and they, they show somebody dumping all these things, and that's so fake. <laughs> yeah, boy. Crap all that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, that, uh, you know, I'm and I'm trying to figure out if our president is. Oh, here comes Bree. Um, I'm trying to figure out if our president is going to get sick or whether he beat the the uh, the virus. Do you think so, Brian? Man, I like I said, I didn't think he would go to the hospital because he's too macho. And then when he was on the balcony, you could see after he took it off, he had his mouth open like he was breathing, like having issues, you know. And mm -hmm. he's never like that. Um, but then these last couple of days, he looks pretty good. So I don't know. I don't know. How, how long a speech has he been giving out on the stump, though? Usually he does two-hour speeches. You know, he's like yeah. Castro. Yeah. The cool thing is the Lincoln Project's had a lot of publicity lately. They are on 60 Minutes, yeah. and then they are on the circus. Yep. So it's pretty good seeing those guys getting, you know, getting out there. Pretty well, funny. Well, I mean, they're doing a good job. Yeah. I mean, they they must do how many they must do one a day, right? <laughs> I mean every day you go looking for the latest one. Yeah. yeah they had the Regeneron commercial. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Regeneron. <laughs> oh my god, it's so funny. Well, did you hear about the you know, Regeneron was the um the uh, uh antibody mm -hmm. medicine that they have developed that they gave to Trump on an experimental basis. Uh, I can't remember what other company has a product pretty much just like it. Okay. Uh, and um, 
the uh, just like it, and they have uh, stopped uh, sh testing it because Johnson it, and Johnson, Johnson Johnson, because there been Johnson some, and Johnson just pulled it because they had some. I don't know. I forget the phrase they used, but yeah, I think somebody died or something. <laughs> yeah, I think they described it in a technical term, yucky stuff. Yeah, some, something went bad. Did somebody so, die? No, I don't think somebody died. I don't know, but yeah, the phrase they used was pretty funny. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, how yeah, you rest of those things? How you doing, Bree? You you have you voted yet? No, I told you that I, I cannot because I moved. Oh, I see. And, uh, his, his my, nice I don't get, hmm? I don't get my old mail unless I want to have a fight. <laughs> so you can't vote because you're not getting along with somebody. Well, but I, I told you, the way that I will vote in this instance is. And by the way, I predicted that Trump would exactly what he would do. That he would go in. That he would come out and say he's, he's a hundred percent, and it's not a big deal. If you go back, I, you'll find yeah. it in the records. But um, but um, what I do is I find someone in the States who's not going to vote. They're definitely not going to vote. And I ask them, will you vote and take my vote so that I voted? And they will do that. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'd say I'd do it for you, but unfortunately... Um, I know who you... I know who you won't have me voting for. So... Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you don't know anything. I really don't. <laughs> we don't want to know. We don't want to know. We're uh, we're back under lockdown here, uh, mm. two weeks. Mm. Really, it's gotten bad again. Yeah, they had a special election uh, in uh, one of the states, and uh, that sort of kicked up the dust. And now we're under two weeks lockdown again. <clears throat> oh, wow. what does that mean? Do they bunch of people together or that's right uh well it primarily means you don't go out unless you have a really good reason and you have to have a letter um unless you're going to the grocery store sure but um, i mean the, the spike the spike from the you said there was an election or something that they had a yeah. spike so there's a bunch of people together or just there were people traveling uh the politicians were traveling in fact the whole the whole government is essentially quarantined right now so, now, Tony, Tony, uh, the uh, uh, isn't your place in Queens one of the hot spots? I'm close to it, but me and Shecky, I think, just missed it right now. No, Shecky. Well, Shecky says it's down the street. Yeah, two, two blocks, blocks away. Yeah. Two blocks yeah. away or something like that. And some of the yeah. kids who go to the school across the street from him are from that area. Oh, yeah. so that, that school's in jeopardy then. Yeah. Yeah. They said, Alex, I was. I, I don't know if it's accurate. My sister is a teacher. She heard that the, those hot spots, mm -hmm. it's 10% testing positive. No, it's... Um, is it higher? Or? No, it's about 5%, maybe a little oh, less. She thought she heard double digits. No, no, it's not that high. No. But okay. it's bad enough that it's causing the rest of the state to look bad. Yeah. You know. Um, but it's... it's um, you know, I, it's gotten bad enough that I, I'm afraid to go out again. I actually got on the uh, the uh, uh, exercise bicycle. Um, what do they call it? The the pantalone. Uh, uh, what is it? The um, uh, did you buy one? The she Marjorie bought one. Yeah, Marjorie bought one. It's a monster. I mean, it's good. It's yeah, really good. But I'm yeah. thinking about buying one too. Uh, uh, you know, I used to take, I used to have a bicycle and I would uh, take my bike out and I would go uh, out through the Presidio in San Francisco and out to the Golden Gate Bridge. That was my route. And then back again. And they have these videos, right, where you can pedal along to being in like Switzerland or France yeah. or someplace like that. And mm -hmm. one of them is San Francisco and it's my exact old route that I used to take. <laughs> so, you yeah. know. You don't have a trainer yelling at you. Come on, old man, let's go. I'm, I, on. I, I'm, I don't want to do that. I, I've looked at them and they just so, you know, so. How can we call it? So gung ho. Come on, we're gonna do it. Just uh, come on, push through just a little. For, no, I just want to pedal. Okay, let me just. 
pedal, and I'll speed up when I want to, and I'll slow down when I want to. Just leave me the fuck alone. So, yeah. so I don't want any of these yentas nudging me, <laughs> you know, uh, to, uh, as I'm sitting there on the bike. I want it to be an enjoyable experience, not an annoying experience. Marjorie and, does the and, trainers, but right? here's the here's the part that bothers me. Here's this company. What's the name of Paneloon? What's the company? Peloton. 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 They have these things where you don't have to have the trainer, and you just can say, "Okay, France." Okay, and then you want France for ten minutes. You want France for fifteen minutes. You want France for a half hour, and then it starts showing you on this really large screen that's there, uh, the road that you're riding down in France. Mm -hmm. And you go, oh, this is cool. So I think I'll speed up. But the video doesn't speed up. <laughs> oh, really? So no matter how fast I'm going, it's still going, you know. And I'm thinking, you know, come on, technologically, they should be able to somehow have something mm -hmm. that goes to the speed of your go nice, you yeah. know of, of your pace but no it doesn't so no matter how much i speed up it's still the same speed and also at a certain point because they got to change cameras or something like that it comes to a, a, like a statue and then it stops and i'm still pedaling along and i feel mm. like come on it's not moving it's not moving so that's the other thing that bothers me about it the worst thing that bothers me about it is in oh. certain pants my ass really hurts from the seat yeah, it's one of those bike seats, you know, one of those, those you, you know, and mm -hmm. I just, uh, the, you, may, you may want to buy a, another seat. Well, no, I, I have, a, she bought me a cushy seat, seat I can put on there, but it kind of wobbles and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of, I'm finding with certain under, certain pants, if I wear them, uh, I'll be okay. But here was the problem the other day. I have to get on the, the thing, right? I have to lift up to get onto the seat. And um, <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, all of a sudden, I come down and I squeeze my balls. <laughs> and, 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 and what's terrible about this is once you're on this thing, you're locked into it. You're, you're, you have these shoes that click into the pedals. Okay? So I... Oh, I got a cramp in my leg. I couldn't do anything about it. I had to just live with it and wait for it to get better. Um, and when my balls started hurting, I couldn't get off the bike to take care of it, you know. Uh, and so I'm, 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 yeah, I got my problems with this thing. It's, it's, not, it's not the best thing that ever happened to me. But... I, you know, I was doing a lot of walking and taking walks, and uh, the other day I went and I was getting lightheaded because I'm beginning to find that the mask makes it difficult for me to, to, to really take a good, fast walk because you're breathing through this. Is, and, and so I get lightheaded and so on. I was on the bike. I got lightheaded when I was on the bike the first day. The second day, I didn't get lightheaded. So who knows? I think it's the medication that I take at night that's causing mm -hmm. some of this. But anyway, enough Come of my problems with my with the Peloton. The only worst thing about the Peloton is it's just a stationary bike. You don't go anywhere with it, you know. And um, I always liked when I had a bike, getting on the bike and going somewhere, you know, and, and mm -hmm. just seeing, hey, there's there's the bridge. Hi, bridge. Hello. You know, they're the seagulls. Hello, seagulls. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, so. <sighs> what are you all doing for exercise? How about you, Charlie? You're an exercise kind of guy, yeah. aren't you? I, I, do my, I do my calisthenics, push-ups and sit-ups, and then I do 15 minutes on the exercise bike. Oh, you have an exercise bike. Yeah. Okay, good. Good. That's terrific. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Shecky has uh, has a has a treadmill, mm -hmm. but but he doesn't use it that much, you know. Yeah, he says he got bored of it. I think. Yeah, he got bored of it. Uh, but but I'll tell you something. I, as I say, I, I I I used to own a stationary bike, um, but then again, it wasn't meant to be that way. 
You just go into the gym a little bit. I just yeah. never used it. Now, here's what happened with me a long time ago. Am I talking too much? A long mm -hmm. time ago, I, uh, I, I had the sponsor um, who made, um, a, 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 but I'll tell you about the sponsor in a second. I bought a bike, and it was a really good bike, and I really enjoyed the bike. And I, I loved it, and I got on it, and I pedaled everywhere, and got my good sense of exercise from it, and it was terrific. I had a girlfriend who had a bike. She brought her bike over. We'd go biking together. It was wonderful. And then one day, somebody stole my bike. Mm. So I had to go down to the store and buy another bike. Mm. The only trouble was the new bike didn't feel like the old bike. Mm. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And I just never used it. I just didn't like it. And then I had a sponsor. You remember these? You remember the Vermont teddy bears? Yeah. Well, that guy sold the company. And started a new company called the Chicago Bike Fa Bicycle Company. And what he made were these old, you know, like the old Schwinn-style bikes with the balloon tires and everything. Mm -hmm. It was really cool. Very cool. And I started riding that one around a little bit. But, you know, then I was afraid that that would get, really get stolen. So, you know, I wasn't. But that, that's my life with bicycles. So... <laughs> Yeah, I made I made a gym because I got tired of waiting for the gym to reopen. So, so in the third car garage, I got a got a tower so I can do stuff, and then I just got the the uh, adjustable weights. Mm -hmm. So that that's doing good. So, but we've been getting out over across the street doing some sports stuff over there, basketball and stuff like that. So that's been helping a lot too. Well, Peloton also has video training. Uh, Marjorie does it. She uses, she uses, I mean, she has a Peloton, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, membership. You have to pay 39 bucks a month. So with that, you also get to use the online thing. And she goes on and they have, you know, crunches and uh, a regular workout that you can do as well on the floor. So she's got a mat she puts down. Our house is turned into a gym. OK, you come into our entryway and she's got all these weights and everything, you know, and I'm going, gee, if I did that, you'd yell at me. You well, know? I'm thinking about doing a light jog now. My niece started jogging. So I, since I can't go to the gym now, I'm actually thinking about just doing a light jog around the park. Did you now. go to the gym, Tony? I actually, I used to go to the gym like two or three times a week. Really? I was quite fit at one time. I was always a workout I always kind of like to. Did work they have the uh, appropriate wallpaper? No. <laughs> I, and I like it, but you know, because I miss playing basketball and stuff like that and football. So once you can get to a certain age and play anymore, your legs say that's enough. Hey, li hey listen, this guy. I got to tell you something about Tony. Okay. I swear he's probably richer than any of us. Okay, and here's the reason why. He sells comic books. Shecky told me the other day. You sold some comic book recently for how much? Two hundred bucks, three hundred bucks? Oh, I actually had two sales on Sunday, and I turned down two sales, Alex. I made five hundred bucks on Sunday, and I turned down two sales because I. It and, wasn't and, and you mean you made five hundred after turning yeah. down? After two turning sales. down, there were two. It was four different sales. I took two, and I turned two others down. Why did you turn? Why, wait a minute. And how much were they going to pay you? Well, I had I had one of the items up for three hundred. He offered me one ninety, but I priced him higher. I says no. I had the book signed by an artist a, a long time ago, yes. and I have it graded and encapsulated so it's authenticated. He's got to break two hundred. Are you, are you listening like, to this, guys? Are you listening to I, this? I Sunday, he, Sunday, Sunday, he made five hundred dollars. Any of you make five hundred dollars last Sunday? It was no. A no. <laughs> yeah. And then Shecky, he's making a fortune keeping his mother sick. You what? Shecky's good with the numbers because I told him what I was doing. Is that you know what I do? I'm kind of shrewd. What I do is now I have my I have the comic account set up separately. So whenever I sell anything, I have a separate checking account so that I can wire the money into it. So then I would take my Vanguard and I have an account set up so that every first of the month I just take some of the money, I tell them, and they just wire it over to my index funds. 
So at least the comics is making me money. Listen to this guy. Yeah. You thought he was you thought he was a fucking idiot when we first knew him, right? He hasn't remodeled the house idiot. since like 1950, so he's saving money him. there too. We we figured him for a complete moron. This guy is the mogul of comic books. You know what it is? I'm very into my stuff. Like Shecky's into film. I'm into comics and music and books. I'm in my own. Yeah, but but there's a difference between Uh, you and Shecky. Well, Shecky simply invests money. That's how he makes his fortune. He's very good at that. But but Hmm. but the point is that uh, that he has all these films. Yeah. But he doesn't sell them. No, he's more of a. I think it's more of the love of a hobby. I have certain books. Yeah, I mean, he has a, he has this uh, just incredible amount of films. Yeah. Um, in fact, he and a friend started a film company so they could store the the actual physical films. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, the fact is that uh, he uh, he doesn't he doesn't like the idea of selling his films. Where you. Would sell off the entire collection. No, if- no, I won't. As I told my niece already, if there's certain items that I want to keep mm-hmm. to give to my niece and my nephew, mm-hmm. like old classic comics that I really treasure, mm-hmm. I won't sell them. I know, like, my first Wolverine, yeah. I won't sell that. My first X-Men, I won't sell that. My key issues of Spider-Man, which are graded, I'll pass those down. So they want to, I'll tell them what they're worth, and they can do what they want with them then. You know, yeah, but you know. sometimes you used to go out and buy a hundred copies of something. Oh yeah, I still, and then I have the money. guy who did it sign all hundred copies. I don't know how you did I, I, that. You know what I used to do at the shows? I was crazy at that. They thought I was nuts. Like one guy went out of business at the time, and I had to be in my early twenties. And the guy, I felt bad. I went to the guy's store. He was in he was on Skillman Avenue in Queens, and I knew the wife and him for a long time. And he, I hate to use the word, he wasn't the brightest guy. He says, Tony, I'm going out. I says, all right. I says, I says, uh, you want to sell some books before you go on? He says, yeah. He says, I got a lot of books that I never really took out. I said, I says, you know what, Jerry? I says, I'll have my brother bring the car over. Tell me what day I can come over because he was going out within two months. He brought up boxes, like long boxes. I, I said, well, just show me your Batman and Spider-Man because I'm fanatical with that. It's all right. Oh my God, these books were never read. So I'm looking at them. So Jerry's like, I knew it completely. And if they're never said, read, folks, they're mint, right? But yeah. they were pretty much near mints, like nine O's or better. So I yeah. said, wow, they're going back from the early 80s. I said, late 70s. He says, you know what? I started looking. I said, you know what, Jerry? I says, I'll just take the whole box because I already knew what I had. He said, well, how much you want to give me for him? I says, will you name me a price? I said, you got about 100 books in there. I says, come on, I'll give you a buck a piece. He's all right. So he didn't think I had the money. I went to the car, took the money off of my brother. I said, so don't negotiate. And I just walked out with like five long boxes that I never even graded yet. I must have took like 500 books out for $500. Off, Alex. They got to be worth about, I don't even know how much now. Because like in introductions, they were never read. And I did, this was before, I would just snap up. I wanted to get them cheaper, actually. But I said, let me not be greedy. The back of my mind said, just take them and get the hell out of here. I said. Then I actually was taking his little books, like old yeah. rock. And then, books. then you tell me, you tell me, you, you tell me. Yeah. Right, Jerry, yeah. throw these in. When, I, these when I sell these things, they send it to my account, and then the account automatically puts it into my Vanguard. What? Yeah. You, you're no <laughs> moron. No, I'm not. I guess I'm not. I was always in my own little thing, though. Yeah, I love. I mean, no, what, what got it for me is when you said the Vanguard part of it. Oh yeah. You know, I mean that you weren't just taking the money and putting it in the bank no, and I getting their ding, account, yeah. dingy little percentage. You know, no, it was <laughs> automatic. Percent when I kick in, so I don't have to see it. They yeah. call me up. You want to put more in? I says, No, I'll tell you when I want to put more in. Don't call me up. My mother's over here driving me nuts. Because sometimes they do the call. Uh, Would you like to put more in on the first of the month? I says, No, I'll call you when I want to put more in. Don't call me. Do you have a will? No, I don't. Oh, <laughs> well, why don't you write one up and put me in? I told Jack if I get hit by a car, he's got my car. <laughs> put our names on it. Yeah. I said, if I get hit by the car, I got you something, Alex. I have stuff for you and him. I really do, actually. I said, if I get hit with cancer, I have a movie poster for him already. I said, you can do whatever you want with it. You have a movie poster for me if you get cancer? Well, actually, Shecky. Oh, Shecky. I'm giving him the Godfather poster signed by the cast. I told him that already. What? Oh. I have it. Yeah, I have Brando on it. I'm, I How much is that one? Brando. You want me to get it? No. Yeah, I, I, we, I'll pick it up. What? I have to go to the basement for it. No, 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 no. You don't have to get it. We believe you. My brother actually bought that for me. He was in Vegas with one of his girlfriends, and he was in one. Of, he went out for the fight. He says it's a reprint of the movie when they re-released it, mm-hmm. but it's actually the signatures of the. They They're all real. 
They're, they're all real. Brando Pacino and I got Coppola on the fucking thing. How much is that worth? I don't even know. I don't even know. I'd have to get it. It's authenticated. I don't even know. I don't even know what he paid for. He wouldn't even tell me. He brought that home. It flew it back. I was almost threw up. I almost. And he spoils me. He's look what I got you. You know what I said? Is that a, is that original post? He says no. It's a fucking reprint. What do you want? Everything but the cast signed it is not taken. Is I it authenticated? Brando. Did you see it's authenticated? I have to authenticate it, but where he bought it from, it's real. Because the guy I know who he bought it from. It's, yeah, but I mean, uh, there are guys who can authenticate a signature and yeah. so on. Yeah. They were charging for a signature, but I know it's legit. Brando signed it in gold. I was like, I stared at his signature. I was like, oh, he's because I'll tell you, I have a, I have a show that you know I was talking the other day about certain guilty pleasures I have that I don't admit to. Mm -hmm. All right, and I have a show that I watch every time it's on. Pawn Stars. Oh, I watch that too. Oh, when they come in with, the, yeah, I like that. Yeah, I enjoy and it. and with signatures, they got these guys that come in and uh, we have a signature. And he looks at yeah. it, and goes, "Nah, this was done by a machine." You know, I mean, they can tell. Yeah, like, you know, by looking is that at legit, it. Alex, you think it was it's stage? What? You think that's when they do that? Is that staged? Do you think it is? Oh, a yeah. lot of it is staged. Yeah. Is it? But I exactly. still I still like it. I mean, I I, I used to, I used to I used to like antiques it. roadshow. Don't sell it, I said it's probably real. I said don't sell for that. I, I liked uh, uh, antiques roadshow for the same reason. I used to watch that too on PBS. One week, well, I think it was two years ago or something. I think they actually estimated that something was worth the most money that anybody ever brought into it. Antiques roadshow it was like. A, a, half a, a half a million dollars or something. I can't remember what it was. You know what the watch. Was it a watch? Yeah, there was. It was a watch uh, that this guy had. It was like uh, Aqua Rolex or something. And uh, yes, he he was so blown away that he fell down. He was a veteran, if I remember. Yeah, this wasn't this wasn't a watch. It was owned by Paul Newman, was it? No. Could have been, but I can't remember. Yeah, but the guy was really. But it was worth like seven hundred thousand dollars. Didn't he almost pass out when they told yeah, him? He fell down. Yeah, yeah. that was on <laughs> Antiques Roadshow. <laughs> and Antiques Roadshow is the fancy version of Pawn Stars. Yeah, I like I like them both. I eat that up when I watch. What it. is that worth? Something? Uh... There we go. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I've been going through my shed. So I've been bored. So I, I went through my shed and I got a bunch of my car parts that, you know, my other cars that I built, I took off taillights and all this stuff. So I started selling this stuff and man, I found some guys that bought most of it. And then I had some of this other stuff real sterling and real heavy. So I've been investigating to see if it's worth, you know, $100. When cells stuff. were big, you know, cartoon cells. Oh, yeah. You, uh, saying, you had Warner Brothers, didn't you, Alex? Well, no. Uh, well, what happened was, in the beginning, people would, you know, I, I, who was it? Oh, I was talking to, I remember who it was. Um, uh, what's her name? Oh. Uh, Karen Babbitt. Now, her father was Art Babbitt. And Art Babbitt was one of the original old men at Disney. He did he did the, the uh, mushrooms, mushroom mushrooms. dance in Fantasia. Okay? Oh, he and he right? also did, who did he do in uh, Snow White? He... Uh, he didn't do, did he do The Witch? I think he did, maybe did The Witch. I'm not sure. But anyway, Karen's father was Art Babbitt. And, and Babbitt would, these guys, when they finish making a film, they take home just carloads of these cells. Be, and, and eventually they'd think about throwing them out in the garbage because they didn't know what to do with them. Mm -hmm. If they had held on to them, they would have been worth a lot of money. And nobody cared. Uh, uh, in fact, this is how much Disney cared about them. During World War II, there was a, um, uh, a, a shortage of cellophane, so they simply took turpentine and took all the paint off of them and reused them to make more cartoons. All right? So she said, uh, when my father, um, he, he and his wife broke up, her mother broke up, but when he died, we went looking to see if there were any of these cells in the house, and he didn't collect any of them. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that uh, she said, we, we were looking everywhere for them. You know, so. Comedian, right? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, she's a comedian. 5105, yeah, I remember, yeah. I remember her. 
And Art Babbitt, Art Babbitt, uh, was the guy who started the strike against Disney back in, uh, uh, I think it was pre-war, was it? I can't remember when the, the but he, and he was pretty well banned from Disney. Although Disney couldn't fire him for some reason, but eventually he left and just went somewhere else and did a lot of other work. But he was a marvelous, marvelous animator. Not theory of the uh, but, but these cells, nobody thought anything of them. And then all of a sudden, one day in like the 60s, it became a big deal to have these cells. And they were lying around like crazy. You know, all you had to do was find one of these animators. He probably had them up in the attic. You know, Alex, it's something you said a while back when we were talking, you were talking about collecting. Yeah. I think you said it like, like when I, it's more like a passion from when you love like reading something. I never, I'm being honest, when you're a kid, I never really thought it in a monetary sense. I just loved like to collect all that old stuff. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like one day, oh, you're going to have a big collection. Yeah. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Well, I'll like, tell you what I got over there. I got two things. I got a Mickey Mouse cell. Yes, yeah, that's uh, uh, but what it is is it is a, it's rare in that it was the only time that Mickey Mouse ever did an ad on television. He did it for Fanta in Europe. He, they drew him for <laughs> Fanta in Europe, and that's a sell from the from the ad. Mm -hmm. uh, and then next to it, I have, and some guy came in one day. He says, "I love I love your show so much. Here, I want you to have this." I have two of them. I want you to have one. And it's the Frito Bandito. Do you remember oh, the like Frito Bandito? Frito yeah. yeah. Bandito. That's cool, yeah. Yeah, and that was done by the uh, um, the greatest animator probably of all time uh, who was over at uh, um, MGM. Man, I'm... Um, hold on a second. I'll, I'll come up with the name in a minute. Uh, he did, you know, hot, Red Hot Riding Hood and uh, cartoons like that. Uh, Avery, Chuck Avery. Chuck Avery? No, uh, uh, um, Avery. I'll remember his name in a minute. But he did that, the Frito Bandito. So I don't know, that may be worth something. And then over here, I have right in back of me, Ren and Stimpy. Oh, I love Ren and Stimpy. Done by the artist. Really? That's nice. Yeah, in, in, in pencil. In pencil. It's a pencil. Uh, that's, that's, that's nice. That's original. Yeah, and these were all people that liked me, liked my show, and would say, get me stuff and send me stuff, and I'm going. You know. That's pretty cool, though. Like the uh, Alex, did you know the other guy, that underground artist? I forgot his name. You mentioned him. Hmm? It was odd, like Harvey Picard. Did you know Harvey Picard? I didn't know Harvey Picard. No. Oh, okay. there was somebody else then, maybe. Uh, Harvey Picard is great. You know? Yeah, I thought maybe it was somebody else I'm confusing with. I remember you mentioning his name. Yeah, yeah. And then who was the guy who did keep on uh, trucking? Um, was that Picard or no? No, that was uh, trucking. Huh? Keep on trucking. What? I know the song. No, 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 but uh, trucking. Uh, like uh, 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 oh God, he used to have a, He used to have a black female cartoon character because he loved black women, and she was big and heavy and buxom, and she was black. Okay, and the name of the cartoon character was Angel Food McSpade. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, to remember his name, they did a documentary on him, and at the end they said he had died, but he never did die. He just wanted that put into the documentary so nobody would bother him. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Tom Yamaguchi says Tex Avery. Te Tex Avery. Yeah. Okay. Now, Tom, who is uh, who is the uh, R Crumb? He just put it up there. That's R Crumb. Really yeah. Yes, R Crumb. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, gee, we haven't talked about Trump tonight. This, that's oh, good. Yeah. That's good. He's he's on the campaign trail. No reason to talk about him. I think he's going to be gone after. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this time I'm. It's not like last time where we went. Oh, how's he going to win? You know, this time it does not look good for him. He's losing. He looks very good. Huh? Really? He's not going to win the popular vote. Don't get caught up on that. Yeah. But Wisconsin is going to be very important, and he just got a major victory there. 
no uh, mail-in votes will be accepted after the election day. That's going to be huge. And I think he could probably win Wisconsin as a result of that. And I think it's well. What you're going to do is you're, you're going to have the Democrats knocking on doors and saying, "Mail it in now." Yeah. Um, postmark, they'll accept it, right? Well, if it's, if it's postmarked, Bree, Bree, uh, I'm not sure. I just, I, I no, I think that has to arrive, and that's that's going to be the key. And Alex, you and I have both said it. Uh, the night of the election, it's going to appear to be very red and Trump. The next day, he's going to say, I got it. I want it. It's all done. All right, yeah. now let's get back to the business of helping the people. And Biden yeah. will say some things. And he'll be saying, no, 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 no. Uh, that It's already done. Anything from this point on, the Democrats are trying to steal it. So I'm sending in the guards and police, whatever we have to do to stop this counting, uh, because oh, yeah. it's just not going to get us anywhere. Okay. I have one. It is clear. Mm -hmm. End of story. Let's move on. Wisconsin well, will ma will mail and, all. And then he's going to say, yeah. he's going to say, let's go to the Supreme Court about it. He's going to lose Texas, and it's going to be game over. It won't matter about Wisconsin. It won't matter about Pennsylvania. It won't matter about Ohio. But he's going to fucking lose Texas. Well, Wisconsin, it says uh, Wisconsin will mail all registered voters an application to vote absentee prior to the election. You fill out the application completely, submit the request to your local election office. You should request your ballot as far in advance of the election as possible. The deadline to request a ballot by mail must be received by Thursday, October 29th. When your ballot arrives, read it carefully, follow the instructions, and complete it and return it. Your ballot must be received by Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020, by 8 p.m., and you can find ballot tracking information, and then it says here, wherever that is. Yeah, I looked at it. What? And um, mm -hmm. early voting in Texas is up 33%. Oh, that's bad for him. That is all bad for Trump. Yeah. I mean, can all these polls be wrong? I can't see it. Can all the I'm polls? You, he's going to lose 40 states. I'm holding to that. I'm going to write that down, Charlie. Remember, you, he called it, Charlie. He's been calling it all along. Yeah. Even if he loses, he's right, Charlie. Yeah, even if he loses by a landslide, is he still going to contest it? Could he really, though? Is that why? Um, I don't think it's going to be a landslide. I think that's wishful thinking. I think what will happen is uh, it, it's in the area of the Electoral College, wherever those states are. It, it, let's say that you know he he comes up. Uh, I don't know five Electoral College votes short. Then it's in those, however he can get to those five, that's where he's going to contest those. And he'll fly to those places, hold rallies, and, uh, you know, say we need to get to the bottom of this and it's illegitimate. Um, you know, one of the things is that uh, Biden has sort of added fuel to the fire. He said that the only way he can lose is if there's chicanery at the polls. So he's automatically gearing, again, they're both gearing people up to say this is illegitimate. K Kamala Harris has actually used those terms uh, when describing. Uh, Amy Coney Barrett's uh, ascension to the uh, Supreme Court. She said it's reckless and illegitimate. So th this basically what's happening is uh, the very foundations of our democracy are being questioned, effectively so, and the media benefits from it. So I, I think this is going to continue. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Did anybody mm -hmm. ask uh, Amy Coney Barrett today, and I didn't hear it because I didn't hear every minute of it, uh, how she felt about the idea of uh, of whether uh, a Supreme Court justice can be approved and put on the bench during an election year, and was the was so. the decision by the Republicans early on a bad decision, a wrong decision from a legal standpoint? I don't think anybody asked that? her that question, no, did they? I don't. If what? It, it, did anybody ask her the question of the, of the legitimacy of saying that you can't um, that that they did f four years ago by saying you can't appoint a, a, somebody to the Supreme Court in the last uh, year before an election, okay, for president, and then they of course turned it all around this time, having their excuse being yeah, but we have the majority. Well, that's no excuse, yeah. you know, that's no excuse. But uh, did anybody ask her about the legitimacy of that? Not that I'm aware of. I think somebody said something about it, but it was about about Lincoln. 
Because remember, Lincoln decided not to do it when he was about to be um, president second time. Yeah, yeah. And he said, I'm not going to, I'm going to wait until, until I win. You know, initially in his second term, he didn't run as a Republican. He was part of the Union I don't know. Party, I think it was called. And then just within month, a month or so of the election, the Republicans just dumped Sherman, who was their, their nominee. Their guy. Yeah, because they didn't like what he did during the war. And so they asked Lincoln if he would run as a Republican as well. And so he did, and of course he won. But when they keep talking about how, you know, he was a Republican. Well, he was a Republican, but whatever a Republican was at that time, mm -hmm. you know, so. Uh, well, okay, I'm not officially able that... to leave my other Zoom meeting. Hmm? I was on call, but nobody came in, so. What do you mean you were on call? For business? No, just for consultations. Oh, I see. Uh, what is that? Your I'm running for president picture up there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm running for Senate. I'm running for the Senate. Is that, oh, your, wait, is, oh, is oh. that your is that your I'm a professor picture? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know Biden's been saying he's running for the Senate, right? Biden? I mean, you know, it's such it's really, really unbelievable the situation that we're in. And I think we we determined the flaw in our system. The flaw is the presidency, the executive off the executive branch, and the flaw is that that we just can't we can't get it right. Uh, and the system. Well, pushes, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Have, wait, wait a minute. Is, what are you saying that Biden said? Oh, he's running for Senate. He said it three times now. I haven't mm -hmm. heard it. Look I, it up. I haven't heard it. Mm -hmm. He okay. has said it. Okay, hold on a second. Look it up. Biden is Biden running for the Senate? It's uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, yeah, and he, I mean, his gaffes are numerous, but they don't get reported a lot. And but Trump it's you is know actually lying. I don't give a fuck about gaffes. Trump is actually lying. He's got Fauci up there using quotes that he said for some completely different person. Different organization. He's Trump is saying like Fauci is saying that about him. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, I think I uh, yeah, supposedly is. it says here uh, that per President Barack Obama's uh, 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 he did say he was running for Senate. So, he so said three times. So he screws up. And, I mean, and, and wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is that a, is, is that enough reason that he shouldn't be president of the United States? Now, is it enough no, reason no. that Trump shouldn't be president of the United States because he lied to the American public about the coronavirus, is responsible for maybe 210,000 American deaths that could have been prevented, uh, that he did this, he did that. I mean, we have all these things. Okay, so, so if, he, if three times uh, 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 Biden said that he was running for the Senate, so fucking what? You know, here's who I'm voting for. In case you didn't see, uh, Richard uh, Brewster's Millions with Richard Pryor. For, of course, yeah. no, none of the above, right? That's you know, it's amazing how many people will come out and say. And you know, the other thing is, I really don't. I, I agree with a lot of people. I think Pence and and uh, Harris are who we should be looking at because I think they're going to be they're going to be coming into command. So. Are you happy right now that Kamala Harris would, would become president? Yes. I am. Yeah. You, yeah. you think yeah. she's qualified? Yes. You think she's qualified? Yes. yes. As, why, uh, not, not more not the, Wait a minute. Hold on a second. The, well, hold on a second. Not uh, more qualified than Biden. Not according to Democrats. Well, not, a, not, not more than, uh, than, uh, than Biden, because mm -hmm. Biden's had uh, much more experience than she's had. But I... And... and um, I wouldn't go uh, feel confident with Pence because he's part of the cabal that's been running the country now. So I wouldn't go for him. I think she's capable of running the country. Yeah, sure. The Democrats don't think so. Well, I'm a, dem was, I'm a Democrat, and I think so. Democrats don't she, think so. Are you a Democrat, uh, we Charlie? Had a we had a fair and 
legitimate process. And she got kicked out very early on. Mm -hmm. She didn't even make it to the second base. Uh, she barely got a single. Right. And now, now she could be the leader else. of the free world. So what? She could be the leader of the free world. I, I like her. And I think that she's a great public servant. And, and Pence? I don't and, think she's ready for and, the presidency. And, well, who's ready for the presidency? Okay. None of the above right I'll now. tell you who's ready for the when presidency. He, Two people were... Uh, mm -hmm. Hillary was ready for the presidency because of all the posts she had held. And Biden is very much uh, has that ability because he was working cl very closely with the president, knows what it's like to be the president. Yes, Charlie. Al Gore. Yeah, Al Gore. using a Republican talking point. The logic is just logic. because just because you refer one person to another person doesn't believe doesn't mean that you believe that other person isn't capable of doing a job. Just because I prefer Bernie Sanders over Joe Biden does not mean I think that Joe Biden can't do the job. Yeah. And that's all they did in the primary was say who you prefer the most. Yeah. They will work yeah, but together he, and not like in Trump which case Trump, Trump, Trump if does he picked thing. Elizabeth Warren. Well, isn't it nice, Charlie, that even though you didn't get the guy you wanted, you got a guy you can live with? Yeah. You know? And I could live with, with Kamala Harris. Yeah. Yeah. Look, you know, how many people are ready to be president? Certainly Trump wasn't ready to be president. He hadn't even no. been in political office. He well, didn't know how to. At the same time. He didn't know how to I'll do it. throw you a bone. I don't think Amy Coney Barrett is the be is the best person for the Supreme Court. Oh, no. And yet and yet that's what we get. So, you know, it, it's we have a flawed system. There was, who was it? Sherman that said, if nominated, I will not run. If elected, I will not serve. That's the person I want. There are so many people out there that are capable and we don't. Are you, you want somebody who does the job degree. kicking and screaming? Is that what you want? Yes. Uh, the, uh, yes, yes. Yes. Yes, Brian. As I've always said, though, Trump does his own thing, doesn't listen to anybody. At least the Democrats, whoever's in there, I don't care who's in there, they will listen to their people. They'll listen to the experts. And Trump doesn't. Mm -hmm. Trump just does what he wants to in revenge, and you know, you have to be loyal or he'll get you out of there. And these are, the Democrats mm -hmm. are not like that. Sometimes the Democrats listen so much to experts that they just get confusing. And, you know, another thing is this. One thing that... Um, is true that you know that that I keep coming back to is you know there were there was a panel of governors who were talking to Trump about why I think wildfires in California mm -hmm. and the, one of the governors said we're going to listen to science we're going to listen to science and Trump said something to the effect of I'm not sure that science knows and he has a point there I know it's flippant but we still don't know what what COVID-19 really is we don't know the kinds of ways it affects our body we don't know how necessarily how you can protect from it. We don't know if you can get reinfected. But we're certainly we not going to find out from Donald Trump working in his no. basement in his little well, lab. You know, I don't see any any uh, degree on his wall. Maybe there's one from Wharton, but there certainly isn't one saying that he's a doctor of science. The thing is, is you've got to focus on the, you know, what's getting done. And what, what's happening is the Republicans use him as a lightning rod. They let him cause all the media storm, and then they're doing their business behind the scenes. And most people focus on what Trump says, when in fact, it's not policy, and it doesn't even get enacted. It's just media fluff, and everybody goes for the media fluff. And that's what we listen, have to Listen, I got to tell you, the press is like, you know, I had a, uh, I had a, a dog once named Kipper. He wasn't the brightest dog in the world. And I could throw a ball, and Kipper would go chase the ball and then bring it back to me, and then I would throw it again, and he would go chase the ball and bring it back to me. And then the next time, I would just pretend to throw it, and he'd go chase the ball anyway. That's pretty much the press when it comes to Donald mm -hmm. Trump. Yeah. You know? they, they, they And, and you, it, it, I could do that all the time to Kipper, and he wouldn't remember the last time that I hadn't thrown the ball. Okay. Yeah, except there are 10 million people watching that ball, and 5 million of them are going along with Chipper. Kipper. Yeah, well, the thing is, the point I'm making is is that the, the press has just, they're so stupid in the way they let this guy play them, play him. Play, you know, the way this That's guy plays That's how he became them. president. Yeah.
<clears throat> but it's not working as well this time because this time they're just mad at what happened the first time and they're just all out to get them except for like Fox and, you know. And even Fox well, isn't yeah. that hot about him. And his old pal Drudge, forget it. Drudge is writing nothing but nasty shit mm -hmm. about him. You know. So. Well, we'll see. I, you know, I uh, I think that uh, we'll, we'll see. You know, we. Have it's going to be it's three. going to be a messy couple of weeks. Okay, it, it, after the election, it's going to be a messy couple of weeks. But when the dust clears, Biden's going to be president. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, uh, you know we're going to have to take Trump out of the White House, kicking and screaming. You know, so uh, I think there there will be a lot of things that are going to happen, but uh, in November. Uh, around the world, not just in the states, and there's going to be a lot of. Uh, well, better happen. Be of, better happen really early in November because November third's the election. Yeah, agree with you. And I think that there's as long as that election is unsettled, uh, there's the world is 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 going to be topsy turvy. Well, the world is topsy turvy. I mean, already. I mean, certain countries are closing <laughs> down again really locking down. You say yours is in Kuala Lumpur. Yep. Uh, what did I read the other day? I think Italy has, has uh, completely shut down. Uh, mm -hmm. England is shutting down. Uh, they're all, you know, they're all seeing this second the wave. Shut down. What? The U.S. just shut down. We have the worst cases going on anywhere mm -hmm. in the world. Yeah, but we haven't. Sh yeah. Our problem is we haven't shut down. Yeah. You know, we haven't done anything to mitigate this uh this whole thing and that's uh, that's yeah. uh, kind of that's bad okay i yeah. mean we we didn't learn you know what but it, it's just to be if everybody would just wear a goddamn mask it's that mm -hmm. simple i mean we had doctors who were saying when asked the question what would you rather have a vaccine or wear a mask and they say i'd rather wear a mask the vaccine's only 50 percent effective yeah. A mask is ninety percent effective. What what do you what are you doing that for? Oh, there she is. Uh -huh. <laughs> she knows just when to come in, doesn't she? Yeah. Yeah. She tries to sneak in earlier, and she tries to sneak under my chair. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So how's the how's school going, Adrian? Good. Do you know who the president of the United States is? Who's the president? He knows when he's teach you that? on. Uh -huh. He knows when he's on. She knows that he doesn't like him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid you, of the adjectives. You indoctrinating her early there, Brian. Mm. Yeah, the problem with kids in the house is you can't yell adjectives at your TV screen. Mm. You know. No, she was yeah. playing a game and she got she died on Roblox and she came over to me and she goes, shit. That's <laughs> 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 What's that? Oh, isn't that cute? She Bad said words, she huh? said her first curse word. Isn't that yeah. cute? Yeah, yeah. Oh boy. Well, okay. uh, anyway, mm -hmm. I'm gonna play this. Ah! Ooh, oh, <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. it's all right. You can do anything you want to. The show's over now, and I'm gonna play a theme song. <laughs> oh, the, this thing takes a while to start. Now I have to reboot it. Uh, anyway, hey. Thank you all. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Adrian. Also, thank your daddy for me, will you? <laughs> yeah, good night. Good night. And of or course, good afternoon, depending where you are in the world. Charlie, and uh, you know, Bree is in Kuala Lumpur. That's a way, way away. Yeah. And of course, Tony is in Queens, and that's even further away than Kuala Lumpur, <laughs> if you're in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, and what is that? I have no idea. Oh, these are just little Malaysian cartoon characters. Oh, <laughs> nothing. I that, thought every that's them. every reason to vote uh, go to Kuala Lumpur. Anyway, everybody, uh, give a big uh, wave goodbye, and I will give a big wave goodbye back at you. There we go. There they go. And that's our citizen panel for tonight. They are terrific. What a nice night tonight. Just yeah, talking about comic books and. Crap like that. Anyway, listen, that's it for tonight. I will uh, be back again tomorrow night. Uh, you stay tuned for Jack Bishop. He's next with The Intersection. Uh, he'll be taking uh, uh, a citizen panel as well. Uh, and then we'll be back again tomorrow night. Uh, we have the sports show on at uh, 
at 8.30 Eastern Daylight Time. It goes till 9.30, then there's nothing for about a half, uh, for an hour, and then I come back at 10.30 Eastern Daylight Time uh, with the ramble. Uh, and in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And additionally, be safe out there and wear a mask, please. Okay? Good night, everybody.